Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he says, that's not a steam shovel. That's my wife. <laughs> oh, <laughs> uh, hi there, one and all. Butch G. Cat here. And you're watching a podcast where nostalgia comes alive. It's Jake's Happy Nostalgia Show. Roll it! Or is it over this way? It could be over that way. It could be over here. It may be back here. Welcome to Jake's Happy Nostalgia Show, the podcast where nostalgia comes alive. Since July of 2021, Jake and his friends have interviewed professionals in the worlds of acting, directing, writing, puppeteering, and many more. Who will they be chatting with in this week's interview? Find out in this Jake's Happy Nostalgia Show episode. Hey everyone, welcome to this episode of Jake's Happy Nostalgia Show, when nostalgia comes alive. I'm here with us. Thank you for joining. As always, I'm your host, Jake Dunbar. I'm here as always, our co-host, Chris Bixby, and Matt Bingo with his pal, Mario Monster. How you guys doing? Hey, good. Hello. Hello. Hi. Hi, everybody. How you doing, Jakey? <laughs> I'm, I'm doing great. Thank you for asking. Wonderful. Nice. Who do we have today? Well, today's guest we have for today, he's a Canadian puppeteer. Now, you may know him most of his work for playing several characters from Frogger Walk and background up into other productions, including, and we're also talking about um, other projects that we'll touch based on later, including Fall That Bird, I'm up at Celebration for three years, so the Christmas tour and a bunch of others. And he, he also created his own character for the room. We'll also uh, mention later on, Budge G. Cat. Please welcome, Mr. Terry Angus. Have you here, Terry? Have you here? Hello, I'm here? doing okay. Thank you? you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, yeah, just just got a bad back these days. I'm I've got a degenerative disc disease, and that really hurts, uh, kind of thing. But other than that, I'm doing fine. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> nice. Good to hear. Quite, yes. It's a pleasure to have you on. So um, yes. so to get, uh, so get things started. So for those who don't know you, could you tell our audience a bit about yourself, about what you do, and I did most of your introduction. <laughs> <laughs> you already did that. Uh, no. Um, <laughs> didn't you? Didn't you do that? uh okay well um i uh i was in fraggle rock oh good i'm doing really good now aren't i i i did fraggle rock for uh four to five years uh on um, back in the 80s uh and from there i had my own series brief time down here called blizzard island and that went for about 12 episodes and uh did different uh worked on different projects as you know you mentioned a lot of them the follow that bird muppets family christmas uh, the christmas toy uh, fantastic piggy special and the 30th anniversary uh muppets uh, uh celebration of 30 years so, nice yeah. yes yes indeed and um had made the uh prototypes for the uh master replicas uh uh, pup, uh, photo puppets that they did. Uh, I can't remember what year that was, but anyway, I <laughs> did that. And out of that, I, I built a, a Kermit, uh, Kermit Gonzo, Animal, uh, Fozzy, and I think that Gonzo, Gonzo as well. Yes. Yeah. Nice. Awesome. Yes. Cool. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yes, very cool. So, before you got into puppetry, what was your background like and how did you grow up? Well, um, that is your arm, right, isn't it? Uh, anyway, yeah, to kind of uh, working. Oh, and now you got the, yeah, of course, yes, I, I know how you're doing that. Mm -hmm. Anyway, uh, repeat the question again. <laughs> that got distracting. What, what was your background like and how did you grow up? Oh, uh, I was... Uh, I was born and raised uh, around Linden, uh, which is 20 miles between uh, outside of Amherst, uh, Nova Scotia. Uh, I grew up in a farming community kind of thing. And my father was a dairy farmer. Uh, and uh, I, I was attending Pugwash uh, District High School. Um, and uh, let me see, um, during that, around grade 10 or something like that, around there about I was doing impersonations of uh, some celebrities of that era back in the 70s and uh, uh, some of the teachers and that. 
And so they would have variety concerts and I'd be standing up there doing impersonations and that kind of thing. But somehow, and I don't know how the heck puppets came into it, but uh, it felt a, a little better to have the puppet on. You know, you're not so as, you know, thinking about yourself, you get self-conscious about things. And it was easier just to perform through the puppet. So I learned how to do a lot of the Muppet Show voices and stuff. Uh, starting out with Kermit the Frog, uh, and I had the, the, the you remember, anybody recall the old Frog Prince record that they had? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I would play the first part of that a little bit there where Kermit goes, hi-ho, Kermit the Frog here, and I would stop that and repeat, hi-ho, Kermit the Frog, and I would do that for a while until I learned how to do the voice and everything. And uh, during high school, later on, um, I found uh, in my 12th grade, I, I found a newspaper article, actually a teacher brought that to me, of uh, Jim doing uh, Fraggle Rock in Toronto. So I took the newspaper to my guidance counselor, uh, uh, Mr. Wallace, and I asked him uh, if it would be uh, foolish to try to go for something like this. And he said, no, all they can say is no. So. Um, uh, with help from school teachers and friends uh, like the uh, uh, my my teachers Tom and Joe Webb and uh, uh, the the Wallaces and and a few others uh, were able to get the money together to get me fly up to Toronto and audition for Fraggle Rock. Now during that audition, I had brought some of my own puppets along, and uh, I would have this suitcase and I had it at the back of it so that nobody could see into the suitcase and I would put these puppets on and come out and do the characters and that kind of stuff. And uh, there was two auditions. There was, the first audition was with, with uh, Richard Hunt and the second one was, was with Jim himself. So uh, for the Jim one, I kept my little crude looking Kermit for the last and uh, I would bring it out and said, hi, daddy. And uh, Jim got a great kick out of that. And said, uh, <laughs> everybody got a great kick out of that. <laughs> and uh, then they said, well, do you, can you do any other voices? So I said, yeah, yeah, I can do some other ones. And uh, they started asking me which they, they would say, okay, do Fozzie Bear. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you. Oh, ha ha. Kermit. Uh, and there were, uh, there was just different shows of Grover. Hello, little Grover here. And I am cute too. Uh, Cookie Monster. Dum de dum dum dum. Hello. Hi there, Cookie Monster. <laughs> Um, different different voices they would you know just call out the names and I would try to impersonate them. If I couldn't impersonate them, I'd say, "Oh, gee, I can't do that one." <laughs> <laughs> and then, uh, yeah, yeah, so yeah, yeah. <laughs> so that's how the auditions got going, kind of thing, and that's how I got into Fraggle Rock. So, yeah. Nice, yeah. Fraggle Rock's a wonderful show, and in the background, nice. I have the uh, the complete series uh, box set. Oh I yes, oh the best. Yes, yes. I Jake Scott it too. Yeah. Yep. Asian we have, man, that's really great we, stuff. That's good stuff, man. Good stuff. Yeah. Yeah. No, we have great. we have yes. we have season one somewhere. Uh, back here with us to see uh, uh, Fraggle Rock: The Ultimate Visual History. Not a paid wow. advertisement, but if you haven't if you haven't got it, you really should. And over there on that corner over there is actually a book and record from 1984, right? 84, yes. Wow, uh, yes. called Gobo, Gobo Fraggle and the Poison Cack, where it's written by Jerry Joel, illustrated by Sue Benning. Hi, Graham. Mm -hmm. Nice. Yeah. Hey, you know, it's great when a... we got uh, all this stuff, eh? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yes. And uh, for, for those who I haven't think heard I got it, that. Um... I think I have that one. Oh, really? Oh, oh wow. That's... Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Can you show that up to it's... me again there? I yeah, think. yeah. Yes, I yes, can. we. Um, I got that one. Yes, and it's yeah. and it's and, it, and it's actually got the storyteller in the back there. Yes, oh yes, yes. that's right. Yes, but, uh, I did. Yes. Yeah, well, yes. I did after Richard Hunt did the first. After time Richard there. Hunt, yes, uh, yeah. Uh, Richard did the terrible tunnel storyteller, and uh, that's right. Yes, uh, he was busy on on Sesame Street, so they handed <laughs> it over to me, and uh, I took over from there. Kind of, ah, that's yeah. wonderful. And yeah, in the cool. middle there is a uh, that's actually a postcard. Uh, I think that photo was, I want to say, from 86. The other day. <laughs> 80, yeah, 86. <laughs> I, th I, th I'm I was sure swimming around the world. and Yeah. <laughs> I, I, love, I love traveling, Matt. This is from the Maryland Center for History and Culture. I don't know if you know right now, at least as at the time of recording this, 
they uh, they have a uh, an exhibition out here called the Jim Henson exhibition Imagination Unlimited mm-hmm. and uh oh, and Jake really? Jake yeah it, it is beautiful man Jake and nice. I actually Jake and I actually met up uh what two months ago uh oh my gosh and, actually uh, yeah exactly two months ago now exactly two months ago it was two months ago today we we met up oh, with wow. some I'm other off. with some mm-hmm. other puppeteer friends of ours and we had all met up um and it was it was the the exhibit itself was amazing, it but just was. the camaraderie of us it's was a, great. It's, it's oh my gosh, it's it's yeah, it's cool. like what Matt said, it's amazing. Yeah, it really is. <laughs> Look at that. What are you? I'm, wow, it's amazing. Look at this technology. Wow, that's fantastic. <laughs> Isn't it though? <laughs> wow, wow. Hi, everybody. <laughs> hey, Kermit. Hi, Kermit. Hey, Kermit. Hi, Kermit. Hi, Kermit. Hi, I'm a fake. I'm a fraud. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not the real one. I'm not the real thing. I try to make sure that so that uh, nobody can, you know, you know, gets mad at me. So there we go. Right, <laughs> right, right. <laughs> maybe, maybe, maybe have one less caller that might help. Maybe. <laughs> ah, wait a minute, Eric. I got yeah. one caller. <laughs> Oh yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Oh boy. Yeah, I tell you. I guess I better yeah. go. Yeah. <laughs> See you guys later. See you, Kermit. <laughs> Put that over uh, there for the That's know. fine. That's fine. Uh, oh. Yes, but but the, uh, the ex- uh, for those wondering, the the exhibition uh, is at the Maryland Center for History and Culture. It runs out here until the end of the year. Uh, December wow. the thirtieth. Yeah, if you, it's it's. I think it's a touring thing. I, I I remember it was in I think San Francisco at one point. Um, I don't remember where else. I think there's a permanent thing at the Museum of the Booming Image in New York. Yeah. Uh huh. Yes. Mm. Yes, that's right. And uh, it it really is great. It uh, shows a lot of Jim Henson's work, like Sesame and Fraggle Rock. They actually have. Let me see if I can find it real quick. They actually have uh, a little stand with the uh, Red and Wembley on it it's mm-hmm. it's it's really cool um any of the fraggle puppet old fraggle puppets there or, or any or new ones or whatever uh i think i think they're the old ones I'm pretty yeah sure the uh-huh ones. yeah um, i remember steve's like like i remember that um gosh like we you like where like we doing like poetry things where um i remember one of steve's please. steve's um like it was on like on his like I know it's also with it as well with the with the fraggles too. Um, um, it's, it's like it's like we 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 wear with your your head while you're and then you have like. Are you talking about the? Are you talking about this as headbands? Yeah. Uh huh. Oh okay. Um, can we Sorry can we not be specific direction? on that? This this is uh on the bottom oh, there. That that's the, uh, wow. Yeah yeah. This is from when we met up. Um, over there the smaller red there. That's uh that's a. Uh, little uh that that was made by manhattan toys if i remember correctly yes yeah, so ah, our, our dear friend she... alex has a red of her own a tiny one ah, but, but she wow. she was like whoa how did i get in there like <laughs> but it's, <laughs> it's 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 really cool though see just seeing those fraggles up and close because we love the original yeah scene. yeah huh? and steve's China, and China. even on it was even with yeah. with the fraggles too so that's that's yeah really yeah cool yeah as well I don't, I don't know i don't know if i have a photo i had that. a red fraggle but it's uh, deteriorated now i uh, said uh yes um, as 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 most of us do yes as most, <laughs> as most, most of us do. do as most of yeah. us do indeed yes, yes. Yeah. Muppets uh, that happy hunting ground uh this is <laughs> <laughs> Oh, wow. oh look at this! Oh my, my goodness! Replica of Morris Fraggle. Oh my Fraggle goodness! That I used on awesome. the, on the show. Wow! Uh, not the one, obviously. Not uh, the one, obviously. It would not have survived. Well, it 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 deteriorated too, from what they told me. I I can imagine. Yeah, but I still had this. This is a second one that I built for. Uh, wow! The first one that I built. But the first one I built back when I was on Fraggle Rock, uh, and I had the real one side by side with it, and I matched them up as best I could, and and uh, this one's better than that one even. So you know. Oh wow! I, I'm using reticulated foam now. <laughs> oh, it's it's great. Yeah. It's great. That yeah. is great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Boom. 
Let a gorg over there. I gotta get out of here. <laughs> I'll see ya. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, frog you, walk is. Uh, you've always wanted to meet a fraggle, haven't you? Yep. 15 year dream come true right there. Yay. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> it's not the that I didn't have true. Her. Sadly, I didn't have the storyteller's pattern, so I couldn't make her. So ah, that's that's fine. That's fine. No worries. The, plus, it's pretty hard to build her too because she had a mechanism that the eyes, when you ha when you uh, raise the glasses, the lids would go up high. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's right. Uh, yes. The glasses back that's down, right. the lids would go down. Unfortunately, mm -hmm. before I got a hold of her, it got busted. Mm. so oh. uh, I, I could never get the device to work so i mm. just left it as it was and uh you know i would tell them that it's broken and they said well <laughs> there we go <laughs> so uh <laughs> richard got to it <laughs> yeah Wait, i do done. i i do uh, i do love those like eyebrow mechs but like that's a whole nother level right there. Yes, yeah, yeah. Like yeah. that's that's that must have been really, really tricky. Uh, so you mentioned the uh, audition process for Fraggle Rock, which I must say is a very interesting audition process. But yeah, what, what was it like actually working on Fraggle Rock? It was a lot of fun. It's so long ago. Some of it's kind of hard to remember now. Uh, it has been a long, long ago. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, I, I remember it was a lot of fun. We had great times, had good friends, and uh, you know, uh, it, it was a blast being on there. When you're first there, you're you're kind of, you know, you're 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 overwhelmed, and you're you're the fanboy. You try to keep the fanboy in, and you know, and you, you know, you're the the Muppets. Wow, oh wow! And then uh, the Fantastic Piggy special was the first Muppet special that I worked on and uh, that was even more like, whoa, wow, you know, kind of with all these, the, Mupp the Muppets kind of thing and, right. and, mm -hmm. and all those guys. And uh, I got to work uh, uh, Zoop for some shots and that and uh, Sam Eagle for another day. They, mm -hmm. uh, somebody got a hold of Zoop. I think it was John Patterson ended up with Zoop. So I ended up getting uh, Sam after that. So, uh, uh, so we were just, they're holding in the characters up and Sam the American Eagle. Oh, decent, 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 decent show. Um, so it uh, one of the funny things is that when, when I was working on the show, they were doing the ending, you know, where everything's blowing up. You have everything blowing up at the end of that show. Have, have you guys actually seen that show? Yeah. OK, I'm, I'm not dying yeah. here, right? What, OK, so the uh, Fantastic <laughs> Mystery uh, Show? Yeah. yeah so there was like yeah, all the yeah. mon television monitors and stuff were blowing up and every chaos and everything and i had sam mm -hmm. eagle on for that thing and all of a sudden the neck busted oh wow. uh, <laughs> the neck was a swivel had a swivel for the neck so that sam couldn't look down or up he just had to stay straight he could only look you know back and forth because it's only like a, a, a swivel type of thing. That whole thing broke. So they had to, because he was so predominant in the thing, they had to actually tape it down kind of thing. And oh, so I had to be very careful okay. with it after that. And uh, during the explosions, actually you see the whole back of my head by accident at the end credits kind of thing. Uh, mm -hmm. And that's my experience with Sam Eagle in that one. Kind of thing. So yeah. Wow. Yeah. So, but uh, it was a lot of fun, and they were great friends. Uh, Jerry, Jerry Nelson was wonderful. He's kind of he's oh, very yeah. teddy bear uh, type of guy, big teddy bear guy. Uh, um, a wow. really wonderful guy. Uh, Karen Prowl was sort of my best friend on the set, pretty much. Oh. Uh, so, ah, um, so she she was great. I I love Karen. Um, and, uh, uh, Mike Peterson, I got to hang out with every now and then. And, uh, uh, for the most part it was, uh, nice. either me, Mike or, or Karen, you know, kind of thing. So, yeah. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Mike Peterson's a good friend. He's also a previous guest. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He's, oh, he's wow. Really cool. You had him on. That's great. Yes, mm -hmm. we did. Yes, yes. He did. He's great. He's great. Yes. Yes, he is. He is. He's wonderful. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So, 
it was it was great. Uh, it's not to say that you haven't had frustrations like any any place you work, you're going to run into things that kind of frustrate you here and there, kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So right. yeah, you know, it, it, you know, you have your ups and downs, like any anything in life, kind of thing. But it was for the most part, it was wonderful. I'll never have an experience like that ever again. I'll tell you, um, not like that. You know, um, uh, the uh, sadly I couldn't be a part of the new one because of my back uh, with the degenerative disc disease it's called it's not really a disease but what happens in between the spines there's there's like a little pad in between your spine mm -hmm. and that starts chipping away and your your spine ends up it ends up being bone against bone and it, oh. that, and it causes hmm. it causes pain and it sort of spreads out into your hip, kind of oh. into my hip. oh so it uh, it it does hurt, and I have to sometimes adjust myself a little bit here as a result of it. But um, I couldn't be a part of the new one. They did ask if I would like to come and play, uh, but I had to tell them about this problem, and uh, that was the end of that. But I still keep in contact with Karen Prowl every now and then. Ah, oh, great! That's wonderful. That's great. Nice. Have you have have you we seen... face chatted with her and my wife and all that? Ah, oh, that's delightful. Have you nice. seen the new Fraggle Rock by any chance? Yes, I have. Yes, yeah. yeah. What are your, what are your what are your thoughts on it? Wow. <laughs> yeah, right, <laughs> right. <laughs> I wish I had been a part of it. Oh my gosh! Uh, uh, the technology in this is just way beyond what we ever did. I mean, to actually see those guys running on the ground, hopping from, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's, just, it's crazy, man. It's crazy. Right. Uh, so yeah, yeah. Yeah. It would make you, it makes you very jealous and sort of a little uh, sad to know that I'm not a part of that kind of thing, but uh, there you go. Uh, you know, what can you do? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. It's, I'm thinking, so, you know, I, I know Jim will be so proud. Yeah, he'd Absolutely. be like he, the he, former yeah. who's doing he'd be over the moon. John with this, man. Yeah, he, he uh, loved Aaron, mixing yeah. technology. Yeah, yeah he oh, loved yeah. mixing technology Dave. with puppets and, and that kind of thing. And uh uh boy, is this like to the moon the the, yeah. the technology they're yes. using now. Uh lots of obviously lots of green screen or blue screen, obviously. Right. Uh mm. lots of Oh Lord, computer! Obviously, some of that's got to be computer tech movements, kind of thing. Uh, so yeah, it's it's amazing. And the new junior boy, what a changed face! Boy, that doesn't have that oh, chin yeah. anymore. They got rid of the chin, and now and his his mouth can now go slide back and forth where it couldn't before. Before it was just an up and down type of thing. Now it's you know it's the, the the jaw goes back and forth. So yeah, it's it's amazing, isn't it? Wow. Definitely. Yes, uh, so it really is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Beats the old technology all the heck now. Uh, this, <laughs> is my, uh, it's... this is my uh, my own character, uh, uh, Butch G. Cat. Oh, wow. Butch. And yeah, that's yes. right. Uh -huh. yes, I uh, Butch. Yes. I'm trying to <laughs> restorate him because okay. the his uh, his head, uh, the foam inside the deteriorated and. Like there's no new fur for this guy. There's, I can't get uh, fur anymore. So what uh, I had to do was take everything apart and try to rebuild the foam on the inside, much like what they did with the museum puppets for from the Muppets and stuff. Mm -hmm. They mm -hmm. restrated them by taking fresh foam, taking off the, the fur, refreshing the foam, and then trying to put the old fur back on kind of thing. And that's what I did here. He's not finished yet. Obviously, the other arm is missing. And there's this... <laughs> arm here all right how are you doing yeah um and i have an eye mechanism on him but oh I, you do it's not, hooked, it's not fully hooked up yet right there we go it's uh oh nice oh <laughs> wow cool. nice. it's cable control baby nice <laughs> <laughs> yes. my ears locked here yeah there we go that's that's the way it should be Awful. Yeah. Wonderful. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. oh, that's great. That's great. Uh, yeah, what I'll have to do later on, this is going to get Amazing. hooked onto the arm wire, the small mm -hmm. trigger 
device here and uh, I'll be able to control the arm and the, uh, the device at the same time. But right now it's not hooked up yet. For I see. But uh, uh, this is sort of the trigger for, for the eyes. And it's kind of uh, just like that. You have a cable inside of another cable and you push to open. Pull, the oh. other way around. Oh, it's oh. Pull, 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 okay. Push down to do that. Oh. So you're getting. If I can put them back on the stand here for a moment, so I can I can better demonstrate that. So sure. Yeah. Up. Absolutely. Like that. Pull down to bring his eyes back down again. Mm -hmm. so that's how wow. Wow. Uh -huh. nice. I love. Awesome. I love. There's, there's a lot symbols. of W. A lot of WD-40 in there, you know. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. <lighting. laughs> yes. <laughs> well, it's absolutely. It now, that I'm... character I, I had created for a telethon locally here called the IWK Telethon. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I had worked with a local celebrity here called Frank Cameron, his name Frank Cameron. And uh, every year we would go into the hospital and shoot the telethon uh, with our sort of co-hosting the thing we would uh we would appear every uh every hour on the half hour kind of thing for about maybe 15 minutes and then they would cut to the other things of the hospital and doctors and trying to get pledges and stuff to help kids at the, at the hospitals kind of thing so that's what he was created for and uh we had a pretty good time with it and everything it's uh, long gone now because there's different people in charge now we've got new views and new ideas and stuff and mm -hmm. they kind of uh, uh, kind of retired me kind of thing, <laughs> mm. but that's okay. That's the way she is. But, uh, yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, yeah. That's what he was created for. Nice. Uh, awesome. That is great. I, awesome. I, I did some videos, of course, for, for YouTube, uh, mm -hmm. of course, mm -hmm. that kind of thing. So it's, uh, I have a few of those up there. I don't think I can do those as, uh, like I used to either, but, uh, thanks to my back. Right. But, um, but I'm trying to restrate them. I don't want to lose them, kind of thing. And if uh, right. if yeah, this yeah. one breaks down, if this one goes, then I got to get a new fur source. So it's it's gonna it's gonna be a bit different there. Uh, right. So, uh, but I have some over there, and it's gonna be darker fur the next time around. Kind of thing. Hmm. So um, that's that's what happens sometimes. Colors of puppets have to change, you know. Right, uh, because you exactly. either can't yeah. find the original source. Fozzie had that problem with the, they had that problem with Fozzie, uh, mm -hmm. because the fur is way different than the fur was way back in the seventies and eighties. You know, uh, the seventies yeah. and eighties, the fur mat had kind of a stretch to it too. It was very different, uh, and a little shorter. the The original Fozzie fur was uh, about two inches long. Uh, you can't find that anymore. Now they're about three inches long. So you can't find a two inch anymore. And plus the dexterity of it changed and everything. And the thickness changed too. So it became harder for them to do a shave down of the face kind of thing. Uh, because it's not as thick anymore. So they can't cut down as far as they used to. I, when I made my Fozzie for Master Replicas, and I still have my copy of my Fozzie here. Um, Nice. Oh, wow. Hey, guys. Ah. Hi, Fozzie. Hey, hey it's Fozzie. great to see you Fozzie. guys. Hey. Likewise. Likewise. Yes. Hey, my wife loves children, but I can't bear them. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> they love me. They love me. <laughs> and should we, should we should do love you, Fozzie. Yes, we do, Fozzie. Yes, we do. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I I, create, I came up with a trick, and I'm going to let everybody in the world know what the trick was of my being able to make my Fozzie look like almost the real Fozzie. And I what I did was I cut the fur down about yay far, and then I used a, a hot heat gun, very hot heat gun, which is used in paint stripping. And you have to be very careful because if you're too close, you burn the whole thing. So I would have the fur about yay far, and then I would heat it, and it would melt down to be like that. Ah. Hmm. And it gave it that look for the original Fozzie, because they were able to go fairly close to the mat and still you know, not see a mat underneath that kind of thing. 
Mm -hmm. And uh, another trick is that the real Fozzie's jaw, the fur on that is just a little bit thicker mm -hmm. than the face part. Uh huh. Something like that. See? Mm -hmm. uh, but not so thick as to be like, you know, heavy beard or anything like that, but just, in, just enough, you know? Right. Why are you giving away all the secrets? Why not? <laughs> <laughs> I don't get it. Why? <laughs> Traitor. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> so yeah, that's how it uh got into the whole thing. And what what I did was when I built the master replica puppets, I was able to talk them into giving me the original patterns to build them. And hmm. uh, that was the stipulation. I said ah. if you're doing replicas of these guys and you want them looking like the real mccoys then you've got to give me the patterns because there's no way on god's green earth i'm going to be able to figure out the size the right size the right everything you know a patterns of you know pattern works that way you know it just tells you what you're what you're doing and so i was able to get a hold of those and for kermit not for kermit no for uh fozzy uh gonzo animal um yeah and animal Fozzie, and gonzo yeah and uh so i had all those patterns and current was a, a lot of a guesswork on my part there and then later michael moore gets gets the kermit patterns but he doesn't get the foam body of the patterns he only got the fleece and so from that you have to work backwards to figure out current kind of thing so so there we go mm -hmm. definitely I, I feel so ashamed now <laughs> you, you Benedict Arnold. <laughs> Let's put the glove on here for a moment. Then. There we go. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> waka waka. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's enough of me. We'll see you later. Bye. Right, I see. I right, see you, Fozzie. All right, Fozzie. Yeah. There we go. I'm a fake too. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Not the real McCoy. <laughs> Fozzie, oh, what are you talking about? You, you're always real. You just called him. A, you just called him In a our traitor. Our imaginations, our hearts, and our imaginations. <laughs> you just called him a traitor too. Come on, yeah. <laughs> Come on man! You cut me, cut me to the quick, Fozzie. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> you cut me. You hurt me. You hurt me, man. Uh, so yeah, Gosh, dang it. Yeah, so, which I was able to. Uh, I was able to figure out how to build a, a Ralph on my own too, but I don't have one here. But. Um, uh, I learned how to do his voice too. You know, there you go. Ralph the dog. You know, there we go. So, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's, so, yeah. That's, yeah. That's amazing. That's, that's all the puppets I can bring you here today. But, because <laughs> everything. <laughs> I'm by us. <laughs> yes. there, all, the little, all some of them anyway. Some of them anyway. Yeah. Right. <laughs> There's a few. There's a few. And a lot of them are, are now dying because, of course, the foam. Right, side is and deteriorates and all that. Yeah, right. And it's harder to build now with this back problem, so it makes it really hard to. This the the butch puppet has been taking me months to build because of the back. And mm. I can't stay in this uh, chair for too awful long, kind of thing. Right. So I I uh, do that when I can. Right. That that and the fur situation and all that. You know. Trying yeah. To find the... Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, and uh, I had to tear everything apart from the old one, kind of thing. So mm -hmm. I had to clean out the old foam out of there over the mm -hmm. garbage can. You know, you'll just take it and you pull it right out. Yeah, and, yeah. Then I had to build a whole new structure, kind of thing. And uh, moment here, this is a wonderful tool. You can you can get things without going too far. If I can just get there, we go. This is the next head for Butch. Kind of thing. This next butch head. <laughs> huh. So that's what it's nice. Uh, yeah, it's hard now because nothing's in there to hold it down, kind of thing. Right. 
Yeah, and so I'm uh, I'm also building a new set of eye mix in here. Excuse me, there, more. Put you down there on the floor. No offense. <laughs> Uh, so this is going to be the head part. This is going to be where the eye mechanisms are going to go, sort of like ah. the skull part. Mm. And I know somewhere around here, the eyes are around here somewhere. This is, there's you can't have a workshop without losing where everything is, you know? <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Yeah. I think I know where those are. They're too far for me to get. They're way over there. Yeah, they are. I see them wrapped up over there. But anyway, the uh, eyes will go in there and uh, you paint them, and then you put the eye mechanism all on. Thing. And then uh, that gets glued, glued on top of here, sort of sort of thing. So, yeah. Yeah, you got to use your imagination. <laughs> right. <laughs> yes. So, yeah. Absolutely. But yeah, I cannot wait for the second season of the Revival series. Uh, oh, it's, yeah. It's the first season. It's it's so amazing. It's, it really it's, is. It's amazing. I, I cannot wait. And I'm very glad that we're people like the new generation of kids, you know, get to see, you know, that it's just it's just it's absolutely wonderful. And for, <laughs> for, for yeah, even even what we got to see, because they had like the VHS tapes and DVD sets and all that. So we we too had that growing up too. So mm -hmm. uh, it's nice for, so for the next generation as well. Yeah, so absolutely. absolutely, absolutely special. And I'm speaking of Mike. <laughs> he told me that I'm I'm actually good friends with, with him on Facebook. He told me that mm -hmm. um, he he said hello to you, Terry. Yes, yes, he did. <laughs> yeah, Mike's wonderful. Great. Yes. <laughs> yes, absolutely. So now um I'm kind of curious. So do you have any like favorite Frogger Walk episodes or songs? Oh, a lot of them are good. Um my favorite, because I guess probably I get to do more on it, was the uh Born to Wonder episode. And uh, in that, I played the storyteller, but I also played a young version of her. Kind of thing. Hmm. Yeah, so, that, that's, um, right. that's where they look back to to see uh, how traveling Matt uh, uh, found radishes type of thing. I think that, that I, it's been a long while since I've watched it, but I got to play both the old storyteller and the young storyteller. So. Oh, Matt Fraggle, what a Fraggle. <laughs> All the stories I could tell. Oh, Matt, oh, I love you so. And because it, it ended up being a young storyteller, I had to do the voice higher because she's a, a little girl at that time. So you have to right. go, oh, Matt, oh, you're so wonderful. Oh, Matt. You know, so, you know, it, it'd be that kind of level right there. So that, that was one of my favorites. Um, uh, they had a lot of good stories there. Um, the um, I liked uh, Maroon a lot. Ah, uh, um, beautiful episode. Fred yes. And uh, Boober get trapped in a cave. That that was a real good one. They had everybody mm -hmm. crying at the end of that song. Uh, <laughs> yeah, everybody <laughs> was in uh, sort of very misty eyed when Karen and Dave did that song. Mm -hmm. And uh, a good one. lots of there's lots and lots of them that I like. You know? Lots of good songs too. Absolutely. Yeah, yes. yeah. Remember when now and then everything went wrong. You know that kind of thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I can't do Karen Prowl's voice, so there we go. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> so Wembley! Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so so overall, you know, working on fraggle rock for several years are there any like interesting behind the scenes stories you can share from your fraggle rock days <laughs> think here. um jeez i remember the muppet ones more so um i remember the first time jim performed mm. i remember that that was um when he did the first convincing john song you know let me uh, fraggle such a Fraggle mouths a waggle. You can choose a do to tie to do blue. Or the, you know, mm. that kind of thing. Uh, and um, we were all like kids watching Jim operate convincing John, although we were all in the scene with him. I, I was doing a gray Fraggle with a goat, a uh, purple goatee in that one. Mm. Uh, and um, the, 
the thing that struck me when I was watching Jim was that it was pure chaos underneath that shot. Uh, Jim was all over the place. I never seen anybody all over the place like that. And but when you looked at the monitor, it looked so right. You know, it looked great, right? It was, you know, it was great. But underneath, it's all, you know, crazy, going all over the place and jumping around and all that stuff. And um, uh, so I was, you know, just, you know I, I was sort of in awe of that. I was just that, doing that crazy stuff and it still looked good kind of thing. There was one time that uh, during our, I think it was, it was our lunch break or some break that we had off, that, Ker, that Jim had Kermit in the Gorg's garden doing a, uh, a dedication to an artist who did, used to do the comic strips of the Muppets and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, and um, uh, he had uh, sat down on, uh, I think it was a low, uh, must have been a uh, office chair, I think one of those low office chairs. And he was performing Kermit. Well, we were all like a bunch of children got around just watching kind of thing we were so in awe and just sort of like taking it you know oh wow look at that look at Kermit you know kind of thing we were like uh you know it was just just uh magic for us kind of thing to see that was my first uh, not my first time seeing Kermit work but second time seeing Kermit work kind of thing and uh, uh that was quite amazing and that's in the gore he was in the gorge garden so yeah I, I remember that one uh, let me see. Well, spe of sp are, are speaking kind of, of episodes, there's also the uh, the Christmas episode. Oh, oh the, uh, I like working on that. Yes, I Bells of that. Fraggle Rock. The Bells yes. of Fraggle Rock. Mm -hmm. I love yes. that. Yes, yeah, so which used to show on TV about? every year for a while. Yeah, I, yeah. I think I, th I think it's still. Done. I don't know if it still does or not. I know it did a couple years ago, but I don't know if it still does now. Hmm. I love that one. I, I also I got in a uh, very yeah. good shot in that one with Morris. Uh, I'm right beside Kansas in, in that ending uh, where we do the credits. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. kind of thing. Yes, yes. And I'm right beside Kansas with Morris kind of thing. And Morris had this little toque on and he had a, a, a snow snow outfit. He had gloves and that kind of thing. And mm -hmm. uh, I think was it Raise Your Spirits High? I think is it was it called or what was the name? Uh, of that song? Raise Your Voice is Raise Your Voice. What it is? Your, uh, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or something. Raise Your Voice or Raise Your Spirit, something like that. But anyway, I was in uh, I was in my glory because I was in a good shot. I had a good. You could really see me very well, and I was having a lot of fun with that. That was the most fun I had there with that, and I was right beside Cantus kind of thing. So <laughs> it was uh, it was really good, it was really fun. Absolutely. It was a good show too. I like that one. You know. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, fi I find it ironic you mentioned that Kerbit was in the Gorgas Garden. I find that really ironic, considering a year later in the Muppet Family Christmas, how Kermit and Robin met the Fraggles. I find that so yeah. ironic now. Like, <laughs> mm -hmm. like the worlds yeah. would combine together eventually. <laughs> it's yeah, just, yeah, yeah, yeah. For for the first and last time. <laughs> first and last time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right yeah <laughs> no more because mm -hmm. all of them they now different three different entities now yeah. right kind of yes uh -huh. jim henson production disney yeah. disney and, and, uh, sesame workshop. and sesame workshop yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, now barely I love, I love cooperating now <laughs> uh, yeah yeah uh -huh. the reason they would didn't do anything more like that is because again the rights and all that stuff so it got right yeah yeah, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Just a once and in a sadly, lifetime thing. So yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it's just really a pity, but it was a great. It was a great show to have all those mixture of characters in there. And the, right, I got yes. uh, the Christmas, the the Muppets Family Christmas. I got to play New Zealand on the back of the truck in the opening scene, and I even oh, got wow. a close up of that. Oh, you know, Jerry was busy in in something else, and and I was got to just perform. You know, just do the movement for uh new zealand and uh uh i got myself in a real good shot the camera got a close-up and everything <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> it was uh it was a, it was a lot of fun uh, and so not when i got to do that and i got to do floyd pepper behind the couch where mob bear kermit and uh the rest of them on the couch there so yeah. i got to do floyd in the yes. back 
kind of thing. And I even got to do Floyd talking. Uh, Jerry was still in Ma Bear, and he didn't want to stop and put the puppet on and do a do a separate shot. So I stayed in Floyd, and I just lip synced as uh, as Jerry did the voice. And it's the only place Phantom will ever sleeps, man. Something like that. So that was the that line of dialogue I got to do for Floyd, kind of thing. And it was a lot of fun. A lot of fun. And uh, I got to do uh, uh, the Grouch next to Big Bird. That's me. In the, in the grouch nice. There. Oh, wow. And that, oh. that Grouch was so fluid and so easy to move. And that jaw was so easy to work, kind of thing. I, I got to play with that puppet a lot, kind of thing. And have the jaw doing all kinds of silly things and sort of things. So, you know, happy holiday. Happy holidays. And I really had the mouth go, you know, side to side on that. So it was, it was a lot of fun. Definitely. Yeah, that was the Muffins Absolutely. Family Christmas was one of my favorite shows too. Oh yeah. yes, yes, Absolutely. That, love, love that special. Yeah, that was amazing. a great. That was a great show. Yeah. Definitely. Oh, I got to. Absolutely. Yeah, I did Gladys the Cow too. Um, you know where they first the Sesame Street guys first come in. Mm -hmm. I'm playing. I'm mm -hmm. playing Gladys the Cow on that, and I I even got to do the line uh in the song with Gladys because Richard didn't want to do it; he wanted to stay where he was. Right. And uh, so there was a like a quick close up of the of, of uh Gladys the Cow, and and I had him. I tried to move it the way I thought Richard would move it, kind of thing, because kind of uh, some puppeteers have their own sort of like a fingerprint of how they perform. Kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Like Jim would do one thing one way, somebody else would do something another way, kind of thing. So it'd be, you know, the flaps would be sort of different, kind of thing right? On some of these ones. So um, so I got to do that. That that was a lot of fun. So yeah, I uh, nice. it was it was it was wonderful. That was a great 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 special. Definitely. Yeah. Yes. Absolutely. So aside from Frogger Walk, you also performed various Muppets on the on the Sesame Street movie Follow That Bird. Can you talk, you know, a little bit about working on that, and can you share like some of your you know, fondest memories for getting to do well, that? Well, one of the big memories, the biggest memory I got on that was that I got to play uh, Cookie Monster in the Hooper Store scene where they're planning Big Bird's rescue. So, oh, nice. uh, oh wow! Uh, what Frank was doing, I don't know. I but Frank couldn't do them for whatever the reason so they gave cookie monster to me and it's in hooper's store and so you know yeah 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 so i tried not to do the voice because uh i feel very funny about doing that person's voice you know like if a puppeteer is there you know i feel very uncomfortable doing his voice kind of thing with him right yeah Mm -hmm. So I didn't really do anything like that, but I did have the cookie, you know, doing that, yeah, 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 that kind of thing, and knowing that Frank would loop in whatever cookie was going to, you know, grunt or whatever. Um, one of the funny things that I remember was I got caught doing a bad thing uh, on there, um, and it wasn't with the puppet or anything, but between the takes, I had my back against the counter of the of the store. They're, they're just sort of like a, a table. Mm -hmm. behind me and my back is against that so i can put the puppet up and, and perform it uh on that cupboard or that that uh table there was a jar of uh m&ms i think or smarties one or the other but it was up and behind me there and between the takes i would take the glove off of cookie and i'd reach my hand up and I would take some of those chocolates and I ate them, which you're not supposed to do. So uh, then uh, over the PA came, would whoever's stealing the candy stop stealing the candy? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great. <laughs> so I sort of, okay, yeah, okay, got <laughs> caught on that one. <laughs> oh, that's wonderful. <laughs> Continued playing the character without any incident kind of thing after that. <laughs> so it was a lot of fun yeah uh so yeah uh and um that one i didn't get to do that much uh because i i had a flight that i had to get home sooner than uh than the than the movie was was not really 100 percent finished they asked if i would stay on and i couldn't really change the tickets 
so I had to uh, go home and they had to uh, finish, you know, they did the rest of the movie with the other thing. But um, I got to do some of the street scenes. I was a, I was a honker in one shot. Um, well, there was something else and now I can't remember what that other thing was. And uh, I think I was a honker for the honker for the most part. Hmm. Um, and then that's when they did that pan around the uh, big bird or yeah, big bird describing all who his friends were. The fact yeah. That uh-huh. Yeah. Different animals that would pan through and you'd see Bert, you'd see Ernie, and then you'd see somebody mm-hmm. else and somebody else and somebody else. And a honker. Yeah. Other, you know, I think there was a couple all of humans. Honkers. I was one of those two yeah. honkers. I can't even remember what color the, the honker was, but uh, yeah. yeah hmm. So I got to do that. Oh, I also was able to do Biff uh, oh, in yeah. the manhole uh, yes. cover in the opening of the show. It, the, the shot is so small in a movie kind of thing. The, the movie screen is way different than a television screen was at that time. Hmm. So it was so small. I mean, you could barely see me in the shot, but I was in the manhole cover. I was totally in there. And Biff was up, you know, through the hole kind of thing and, and that kind of stuff. So I got to do him there. And I was, uh, he was playing checkers with some fireman or something like that, I think. Uh, so, yeah. yeah. Definitely. Yeah. So you also got to puppeteer on the Canadian Sesame Street special, Basil Hears a Noise. What was it like working yes. on that? Yes, I think, I think, I think, I think I was doing the two-headed monster, I think in a crowd scene hmm. oh. uh wasn't much in the way that i could do things in that one that's the one i think i remember the most as uh the two-headed monster and um i remember uh elmo telling telling one of the other puppeteers to uh to be quiet sort of thing in, in a nice well not in a nice way <laughs> <laughs> Kevin Clash was getting irritated, I think, and shut up. Yeah, like that. <laughs> that sounds a lot like something Kevin would do. Yeah, that, yeah. that does. Oh yeah. gosh, shut up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yeah, so uh, that's uh, one of the other things I remember. Uh... Yeah, that's it. Yeah. That's it. And um, yeah, yep, yeah, that's it. I think I can remember at this point. It, remember, these things are a long time ago for me now. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it's a little mm-hmm. hard to back. So, right. Yeah. But but going back to follow that bird quickly, I, I that was another really wonderful movie. Yes. yes. Yeah. It's so, yeah. it's so amazing. Yeah. Absolutely. It? I think Oscar called it the follow that turkey movie. <laughs> yeah. that's what oscar called it <laughs> and because it's yeah. all that bird i should ask what was it like working with carol spinney carol spinney is one of the nicest guys you ever want to meet holy smokes uh he's he's so generous with his, his his time with you and talking to you and all that stuff and uh he relayed the uh the story about uh his trip to uh was it japan was it the, the, or china, china? China, yeah. China, China, probably, where, yeah. Where, yeah. Where he met One this little girl, two. and they got so attached to the little girl, him and his uh, mm-hmm. his wife. Yeah, and uh, yeah, yeah, I think it was China. very sad for them to leave the girl. Uh-huh. Kind of thing. So he was relating mm-hmm. that story to me, and mm-hmm. uh, um, then later on we hear from one of his uh, that that special on him, that movie they did of him. Oh yeah. Um, Oh, yeah. He relayed that they actually end up meeting that girl again when she's older. Kind of thing. Oh, wow. 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 It, was a great, it was a wonderful, nice story. It's a really well done story. See that spe- see that video if you can. It's the, the uh, 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 what is the name of that? Um, the bird. Is it I, I am Big Bird? Yeah, I am Big Bird. Yeah. I am Big Bird. Yeah. Yeah. It's Mario. Okay. Yeah, I am Big Bird. Yeah. The Kevin video too was was pretty. Good. Oh yeah, being so, Elmo, yes. Yeah, being oh, Elmo, yes. Yes. That was a, I love that yes. documentary. I love yes, that. Was yes, a good so one. That, that, that was a great that was a one. Yes, one. wonderful. Yeah, I like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I like the Carol Spinney story too. That was really good. Yeah. Yes, yes. Absolutely. Those were two well done uh, you know, uh, biographies. Mm-hmm. Yes, as far as I could see. <laughs> Absolutely. Now, since you actually just mentioned Blizzard Island, you know, you got to, you know, create and perform for, for, for that series, which was, was from CBC. I mean, can you kind of 
describe like what was that like getting to do that and what was the creation like process getting to do that well too my friend stony ripley and i were the creators of the show and we had created that while and actually before i even got into fraggle rock we started doing this for a class project type of thing we wrote this whole thing about a uh, a witch and a snake and two kids that had this amulet that was magical kind of thing and this witch was after it and the snake was after them too for mostly for food reasons but anyway uh, uh so i was during fraggle rock we got to perfect it when uh, during my time off from fraggle rock and the time the hiatus came up i was able to go back to amherst and stoney and i would uh uh keep writing this thing and we did our own little home video of it yes when i was in Fraggle Rock enabled me to get the money to be able to buy a camcorder. Yeah. And camcorders in those days were very different than our cell phones, you know, our cell phones. Oh, yeah. We now shoot things with these now. Mm -hmm. But back then, it was a big clunky thing that had wires that had to attach to a box. And from that box, it would have to go to the VCR machine, the uh, yeah, videotape machine, and uh, that's how we recorded it. Of course, recording we couldn't edit it, so we had to do right. everything as we went along, kind of thing. And we had to be very careful with our editing to go from one scene to another because, as you know, videotapes have a habit of winding back when they're paused or stopped. Mm -hmm. So we had to be very careful how we placed everything uh so it could all match up uh very hard job to do uh but we made this home video and then i went and tried to shop it around uh i showed um some of the henson pe uh the uh the gang at fraggle and uh, they gave me tips on what to you know how to improve it and all that stuff and so i went i finally found uh, a fellow here in halifax by the name of andrew cochran uh, at, uh, Studio East Limited was the name of the company at the time. So I went into him and uh, he liked it. And then uh, sent, we recorded some six minute, a six minute demo and shot it off to CBC. They liked it and uh, had their own notes and stuff of what they would like to see and all that stuff. And so that uh, thing was born. We did two pilots and then we got a 12 part series out of it. And uh, uh, sadly, we couldn't get anything more because uh, budget cuts had hit CBC at that time. And they cut a lot of programming. So that was the end of uh, Blizzard Island there. Kind of thing. So, yeah. Hmm. But uh, I got to do the snake in the show and I got to do the witch. Now, the witch in Blizzard Island is a lot like Caminella Grundiful. Uh, if you know who Caminella was from the Frog Prince and all that stuff. Kind of thing. Have a pop over, Froggy. You know, that kind of <laughs> thing. So I um I took the voice from that, from from uh Caminella. Excuse me, my throat's getting a little dry here. So I'm just gonna get it wet here so I can do the voice better. So, so I ended up doing the voice like that, and uh, you know, that was uh Sydney the Witch kind of thing. Um <laughs> so I did that voice. And Sir Python was sort of a high regal kind of snake character, and uh Oh, yes. Yes, 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 dinner at last. After four long years of starvation, I, Sir Python the Snake, shall dine at last. Yes, 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 yes. yes. <laughs> so that was um, the, the Sir Python character. And uh, there was a lot of ups and downs with the show. Um, we had some very good times, we had some great times, and there were things that I saw that I didn't like, you know, kind of thing. But we won't go into all that. But, um, right. Unfortunately, the, the rights were kind of uh, uh, belong more to uh, Andrew Cochran than they did to me. So, you know, there we go. Um, one of the things that I kind of kicked myself about now is that when I, after I had sold this to Cochran and CBC, uh, Jerry Jewell came to me and said, why did you not come to us about it? And I said, well, I didn't think you guys were interested. And Jerry just turned away and sadly walked away with his head shaking you know, missed opportunity type of thing. So um, I now wish I had it done that. So it's a... <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> so, 
anyway so yeah 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 nice it was a lot of fun a lot of fun too the show was a lot of fun and a lot of a lot of headaches but a lot of fun <laughs> yeah my favorite awesome. part of that is when we actually had them we have them actually going across a bridge and you see nothing under there you don't see any puppeteers but you see the puppets crossing this bridge with their feet and everything mm -hmm. so that, it was a good shot that was a very good shot blue Absolutely. screen of course you know mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. nice Nice. So I'm kind of curious, what's it like getting to puppeteer on the Muppets a celebration of 30 years? What's it what now? The Muppets a celebration of 30 years. Oh, that. Oh, oh, there's so many of us. Wow. Talk about puppeteers. We had a whole whack of puppeteers. It's, uh, I know. Yeah. I mean, especially in that group shot at the end there. So mm -hmm. yeah. how many puppets. Yeah. Oh, for Many. goodness sakes, what a, <laughs> what a collage of That's what I always loved about watching, you know, puppetry projects was the big pieces, like, at the end where they'd have, like, a bunch of puppets together. Yeah, yeah that's... Like, for example, uh, in the Muppet movie, the original I was just going to mention that, that yes, the end of the Muppet piece, movie. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, I, I was doing mulch at a table in one mm. of, in that show. Uh, and uh, mulch, does anybody know who mulch is? A little bit. Uh, sounds good. Yeah. Um, all right. Um, Debbie Harry. The Debbie Harry show. The, the sort of. Uh, he was sort of like a Frankenstein-like puppet. Oh yeah, on the on the Muppet show. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Okay. okay. Yeah. Yes. I know. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. Yeah. And so uh, I got oh, to yes. do him at a table, kind of thing. Hmm. And I was stuck there for a good long time as mulch and kind of thing, with every. You know, I don't know hundreds of puppeteers we had there, but. Uh, but I was doing mulch for one table. And then when they let go of the puppeteers, the rest of us stayed, the regular group stayed to do individual shit, table shots with certain things. And I got to play, um, I think it was Zoot in the band pit for a little bit. And I got to do one of the frackles around the table when the vegetables are talking. Um, I can't remember if I was the blue frackle or the brown or the green frackle, but I think it might have been the blue one. I'm not sure, but I did one of the two frackles around that table with the vegetables talking about what a good source of protein they are and all that sort of thing. Um, and I got to do Kermit applauding for the zoom in to Piggy. Uh, oh, nice. Doing, during that, very small again, small in the shot, but there we go. Uh, and yeah, so there's been different things like that, and then yeah. Yeah, so it was, it was great. Yeah, nice, awesome, very nice. A lot, of, yes, lot, very lot nice. a lot of guys, a lot of guys. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Certainly a lot, and those uh, those group shots again, just mind blowing. Like that, the Muppet movie, just just amazing how it all comes together. Uh, it takes so, days to do too. <laughs> I bet. Yeah, I bet. Yeah. Like I remember reading on the Muppet Wiki, like the finale of the Muppet movie took like a day to film just that just that part just like that part, all the yeah. puppeteers in the pit can't imagine yeah, yeah. because you, you you know you have to have everybody coordinating that's a hard thing to do mm -hmm. get a whole mass of people yeah coordinating and doing all that stuff and um uh when uh, at the end of the 30th anniversary where we're all doing the rainbow connection kind of thing and uh so we would do a whole they would do a shot of the whole thing with all of us there and you know i think and then they would go table to table uh, during the whole process. And, uh, that took a long time to do. Mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I bet, but it was very well worth it. Yes, it was. Um, so in 1989, you got to do a special event at the Kennedy Center, which eventually turned into a TV special from the heart. Now, for those who do not, are not aware of this special, it was the uh, the first international very special arts festival at the Kennedy Center in Washington, D.C. Uh, that eventually became a TV special in September of 1989 uh, called From the Heart. You got to perform with Kermit the Frog as yes. Kerm 2. Uh, yes. Being green. What was it like, first of all, just even being at the Kennedy Center? That must be a huge honor in and of itself. And it uh, what was. was it like getting to work with Jim Henson on such a special event like this? 
Yeah, well, um, it was it's quite special um, and special arts. And, and I don't know if I mentioned. Yeah, I was born with cerebral palsy, mm -hmm. uh, which yeah. um, uh, affects your center of balance and your your motor reflexes and stuff. And so I walk with a bit of a limp type of thing. And so uh, and I forgot to say that. And that's important, too. I should have I should have mentioned that right off the bat. Uh, but um, no, my head's all over the place today anyway. So, um, yeah, so it, we, we, um, it started with a phone call from, uh, from Henson, uh, saying if I would like to do that, I said, yeah, sure. I'd be honored kind of thing. And, uh, we flew, I flew down over to, uh, Washington, DC and, uh, uh, I had to sort of recreate a puppet for the Kerm too, because I did not have the original puppet that I auditioned with. That was like in my parents' basement and there's moisture in a basement and moisture got into the puppet and it wrote it, the thing, all the pieces. Uh, so I'd had no puppet. So I had to make a new one and I built two of them. I built one of a sort of an adult like puppet frog and uh, one of a small, almost Robin like frog. And I showed Jim the two frogs. And I said, which one do you want? And he said, All right, we'll take this the little guy kind of thing. So I took the little guy and uh, uh, did him. And um, I kind of kicked myself for, um, for the, the special. I had somehow, during the flight, had caught a cold during the flight. Somehow. Hmm. And uh, during the course of that day, my voice was getting changing a bit. When I get a cold, it affects my vocals a lot. So my Kerm too didn't sound like the way I wanted it to. So it sounded like a different, slightly different than what I normally would do Kermit as. But I um, uh, did that and we did the uh, uh, not easy being green kind of thing. Um, and uh, we rehearsed that a couple of times and then we did it for the uh, show. And uh, it was very special, but it's also zooming, you know, everything's happening so fast, you know, when you do something like that. And I uh, uh, got to meet Kenny Rogers, thanks to Jim Henson. You know, just introduced oh, wow. me to Kenny Rogers. Oh, and, wow. Oh, my yeah, God. yeah. And Jim was apologizing to Kenny Rogers still about uh, how late they went with the Gambler song. They went very late, I guess, with that uh, back in England when they did the Muppet Show. And oh. uh, 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 Kenny Rogers was saying, "No, no, Jim, that's fine. You know, it, it was never a problem, kind of thing." And so, uh, so I got to meet him, and uh, um, got to meet uh, Louis Gossett Jr. Very nice guy, very very nice guy. He was kind of like a cheerleader during the whole thing. <laughs> you know, he's like uh, <laughs> uh, made everybody feel special that came off the stage and everything, kind of thing. So he was he was a great guy. I, I I enjoyed meeting him. Uh, wonderful, wonderful guy. Wonderful guy. Um, nice. So yeah, it was a lot of fun and uh, nerve wracking too because you're nervous and you don't you don't want to blow it. You don't want to do anything wrong with the thing. And uh, so, uh, although I was a little slightly off key in one little area, but other than that, it was okay. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. yeah, yeah, that was a lot of fun. It was a great deal of fun. That's wonderful. Oh, audition I haven't had for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> Matter of fact, um, uh, I'm so I'm so. Oh gosh, I forgot the line now. How did that go? I was green behind the ears or something like that. Anyway, um, why well, try to do something that you can't remember? <laughs> ah, all right. it's all right. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, it was it was great, and singing with Jim and and learning from him, you know how to you know just doing the proper singing and all that stuff was a lot of fun. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, we rehearsed that sucker two times, I believe. Hmm. Interesting. And there was a dress rehearsal. Yeah, they yeah we rehearsed it two times, and then there was the dress rehearsal, and then we did the actual show. Nice. Yeah. A lot of fun. Nice. A lot of fun. <laughs> Hard to describe something, you know, how excited a person was when they were doing that. Right. Oh, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Yes. So, um, so one of the other Hanson films you puppeteered on was the Christmas Toy. What was that? That like? Oh my gosh, that. that that one was uh, kind of frustrating a little bit because I didn't get to do much because the the set was so closed in. It was hard to get in there and do things and stuff. Uh. Um, and I did get to do one of the remote uh, the remote bird on the uh, on the, the, the toy bird, I guess on a on a stand there. It was the, one of the radio controlled things, and uh, I did that, and I got to do. Uh, behind the wall, I was one of the other characters. What character was that that I did for that one? Um, but uh, yeah, yeah, it wasn't as much to do on that one because uh, uh, everybody was the smaller characters slightly, and they were you know uh, different way of puppeteering. The, the set was closer and closed off more, and uh, not as widely maneuverable as as everything else. You know? So that mm -hmm. that one I didn't do get to do too much on that. It yeah. was nice to see everybody and get to you know catch up and see how everybody was doing and all that stuff. So that was good. Definitely. So, moving kind of moving on from Henson and the Muppets, uh, you've also designed and created puppets since the uh, since the eighties. How how did? Because uh, I know we talked a lot about performing puppets, but how did uh, creating your own puppets kind of come into play? Well, um, they they were create it either through drawings I would do prior or uh, there are times where I built them on off the fly, you know, just built them as I went along. Right. And then there are ones where I would pre-draw what I was going to do. Um, I don't know if I have anything like that still here. I did have them in this thing. Um, I think there was a lot of people. No, that would be on that side. That'd be hard to get a hold of. So, um, yeah, I would, um, I did a drawing for a group of characters I called Tooth and Claw, and it was about a group of animals that want to become a rock band. Now, that's not very unique or original, but uh, that's why it never sold. But um, yeah, there would be sometimes drawings, and uh, then you would uh, figure out how to how things are, you know, how the foam would work for curves on the cheeks, kind of thing. As you can see, I've got uh, uh, put like B for back, bottom, cheek. Cheek. So, uh, and then same thing here. You would mark what they are, so that when you glue it all together, you know what where you're putting everything. Kind of thing. So, so, yeah. Oops. The whiskers came out. So anyway, um, <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah. So they're made. There, it's an interior foam uh, with exterior fabric or fur or what have you. Uh, the bodies are the hardest things to build. Um, you want to make them you know uh tough enough but not so tough that they are not maneuverable but yet you know um yeah but let me just take Fozzie off his stand here because there's some stuff on the bottom of the stand hey Fozzie. take that off oh they're all stuck together <laughs> oh, <laughs> nice, nice. Uh, okay, here's a sample of a body right here. Uh, so you have mm -hmm. the foam yes. body, and inside there's boning. Mm -hmm. You can see it, kind of thing. Oh, Some yeah. of them I put wire in them to be able to make it so they won't collapse on you. Mm -hmm. So the body would, you know, character like that. Thing and in most cases, you know, it's just you leave the head separate, kind of thing. The legs and the arms and that kind of thing. Huh? Another body that kind of was test body that is now all. <laughs> and this is what happens when you don't put any boning or or wire or what have you in there. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it is. <laughs> yeah, <absolutely. laughs> and uh, this is when I was trying to figure out uh, one care another character's body. Oh my gosh, this has been squashed so much now. It's pretty bad. But uh, yeah, yeah. It's pretty hard to build. It's um, I kind of like performing better than I do building. But mm -hmm. um, you can't, in, uh, uh, when I was on my own, um, pretty much uh, you can't have one without the other. Uh, you need a puppet, right, if you're going to be a puppeteer. So I, I had to learn my learn how to build them. And I would do research like the magazines, you know, like you know, mm -hmm. how Henson would do things and 
I would slowly figure it all out, and, you know, through trial and error, what works, what doesn't work. That's something a lot of puppet builders don't have is patience to sit and do this sort of thing. Uh, it's a lot to do. Um, I have had people write to me and want the quick way out and ask, well, what does this body shape? And I said, I would tell them, well, I hate to be cruel, but you should find that out for yourself by trial and error and try to figure out what shapes work and what shapes don't work. It's a lot of trial and error. Eventually I would cave in and tell them how to do it. But uh, <laughs> you know, um, and I, something I learned a long time ago, and actually it was with Blizzard Island, I learned this that you should have you should make patterns for your puppets when you build them. Absolutely, yes. And the Definitely. when I when I was first coming up with Blizzard Island with Stony, I had um, I was making them off the cuff. All the Blizzard Island puppets were being built off the cuff. And when I finally got to sell the thing, and we found out we were going to actually use human children on the show, which meant the puppets had to be bigger in order to work against them. Uh, Sydney the witch could never um, would have to be a proper size to be able to put up, you know, put a fight up with with a kid, kind of thing. So uh, I had to learn about, yeah, you know, I found out about patterns that way. And so when I made the next set of Blizzard Island puppets, I made patterns for them. It takes a little longer when you're first building them, but it's worth it in the end. And that way, you always have uh, patterns of your characters, much like Butch, where you know you. This envelope has Butch G cat patterns in them, you know, to make the cat. So, um, so yeah, you you do that. that, that that's something that's very important to do. Uh, so I found, and um, I had done a show in um, Kansas, a Little River, Kansas. That was about a bunch of fish characters, and uh, a guy had designed the look of the fish, and he sent me the drawing and I would have to make a puppet out of that but as I was building it I would take the pattern pieces and put them down on paper and make a copy of it on paper and put where all the darts are supposed to be uh, so yeah darts are important uh, darts help make things round kind of thing so the pieces will be round and uh, very important so um, so I learned out where all that is and did the patterns and uh, uh, then I shipped them into Kansas. I, I flew down to Kansas and played a couple of the characters on that and uh, uh, worked out pretty good. So a lot, a lot of trial and error. That's the thing I got to stress to people. You know? Definitely. So kind of uh, going back to talking about uh, Butch G. Cat, I know you talked about um, performing it mostly for the IWK Telethon, but what kind of went into the creation process of well, butch well the character yeah they came to me and asked me that they needed a character they wanted to have a puppet character uh to play against uh frank cameron on the iwk telethon and they came to me about that and i said well uh what what do you want to what do you want the character to be and they said they want him to be able to insult frank be able to put up a fight with frank cameron so to speak not that we would physically fight i'm just saying you know um yeah. So uh, I, I, they were in the workshop here, and I had puppets sitting on the rack. I had two cats sitting on the rack, two, two puppet cats. And I pulled one off of it. It was a, a kind of a grayish green cat puppet, and it looked very different than how he looks now. Um, and I put that on and said, uh, so what do what you want? Uh, you want somebody who can stand up and, you know, who's a big tough guy, you know, tough ball, to put on that tough voice, you know, kind of thing. And they still loved it. Okay, let's do that. Let's have that one. And, and uh, uh, the rest went on from there. I knew he had to be a bit of a, a stinker character, but um, I decided, well, let's make him um, kind of a spoiled actor type of thing. Uh you know, be sort of very full of, kind of full of himself, kind of thing. Uh, ego and fur, another description, but he's also clumsy, too. So a lot like, uh, uh, I don't know how many, you guys know of a show years ago called uh, Get Smart? Oh, yeah. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Maxwell Smart, who's played by Don Adams, was a very self-assured character, but very fumbling and very bumbling. And uh, uh, he would fall and then jump up and try to pretend it never happened kind of thing. He would adjust his tie after he fell or whatever, the other kind of thing. Uh, so that was sort of how I envisioned Butch. And I you know, secured that more and more into him kind of thing. And we would have a bit of a rivalry, rivalry between Frank Cameron and Butch the Cat. So that came into play and uh, did that for many years, uh, uh, you know, that they would try to uh, outdo each other here and there kind of thing. So um, that's how the character was kind of born. Okay. Definitely. Yeah. The rest is history from there. Yes. Yeah. Wonderful. Now, speaking of Butch, he also had his own educational video, Butch G. Cat, Ace Reporter, the Crime Stoppers Caper. Oh, that, that's yeah. Amazing. Okay, that one. Yeah, that was, yeah, that was a friend of mine, Mike Boyd, wanted us to do a bunch of, he knew of a guy in the police department that uh, they wanted to do a Crime Stoppers video that would appeal to younger audience. So um, we decided, well, let's put Butch in there and, and have him be an ace reporter. So I, if memory serves me, I had him, I had a uh, trench coat jacket on him and, and that kind of thing. And uh, he became this sort of ace reporter. I want to make these eyes go up and down, but they're down here. Uh, so, yeah. So, yeah, he'd, uh, that we went all around. A lot of Nova Scotia, around the Halifax area and around the Dartmouth area and around uh, the, uh, Sackville and a whole, you know, a few places like that. And we would have Butch interview some people and then do some shtick, you know, with the cat, you know, because we, you know, we want people to uh, to be able to um, uh, have some fun kind of thing. And uh, so. Um, yeah, we even had him driving a van in the thing. Uh, oh, wow. As you know, puppet driving a car is not an easy thing to do. Let alone mm-hmm. a van. Right. Uh, so what I had to do was I had to lean the chair back a bit, still run it with my feet, the uh, pedals, and I had Butch in front of me in such a way I would cheat and actually hold the back of the head like so, and in front of me and just had his hands placed on the wheel, I would turn the wheel underneath and it would look like he's driving the van when actually I'm doing the driving and I'm looking and making sure that, you know, that I'm still on the highway and everything and driving this van with the puppet in front of me and just, but I'm in the dark back there that you don't catch me because it's dark behind Butch and, uh, uh, so I was able to pull that little fantasy off. It looked pretty good to have it go down the highway and you see the cat sitting there driving uh, you know, on the highway. And uh, so, yeah, that was a lot of fun. That, I think, turned out was that an hour or a half hour thing. I forgot now what it was. I have it in one of my, in my DVD collection now, which used to be on a videotape, but I had to get that transferred over and, and that to DVD now. So... Um, uh, I've still got that. I can't remember. I think it might have been 30 minutes, I think, of, of, of the thing. And it turned out quite nice. It was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun to, to be able to pull off some of this stuff. And I, I ended up having Butch eat a, a, a pie in, in a store kind of thing. We had him shopping in a store and we had him stop off at the food counter and, and grab a pie and, you know, kind of. I had two or three of these <laughs> puppets. I had two or three of these guys. And I would take the one, this what I call the stunt butch, and I would have him eat the pie sort of thing. So it wouldn't ruin the actual puppet, the master puppet. So, uh, and it looked pretty good. You know, it was like, what? You know, just cake all over his mouth and he's going, what? What? You know, people were watching. <laughs> <laughs> and they would keep eating kind of thing. So it turned out quite good, quite fun. I love that little piece. It was a lot of fun. Um, yeah. yeah, I got to do two villains in the thing too. A couple of, uh, I did a weasel that was, uh, it was a villain that was doing a telephone 
uh, that was being caught by the cops. We had a real cop come in and do this too. So he had opened the door for my weasel to go in and, and you know, get into the car kind of thing and did a shot of him in the car talking and, and that kind of thing. And, uh, uh, and I had a tipster. I played a tipster, which was a fox puppet. And uh, he was the one that kind of told them about the weasel twins doing some bad stuff. And uh, so the cops go get them. And that's what Crime Stoppers is all about. Crime Stoppers is about, uh, and I think I think you guys had this in the States too, where you would call in tips uh, if you knew of a crime that you knew about the crime that had been committed. Then there's a, a line, a number that you call and you can leave a tip as to what you think, you know, or what you saw and the police would take that information, and it's totally um, where you do not reveal who you are. You can you can be anonymous, and uh, they you would phone in the tip, and they would take that and get or you know see if they can find whoever did what kind of thing. So yeah, so we we're trying to promote that. Nice. That's what that's all about. Interesting. Nice. A lot of fun. Yeah. Yes. So I know Jake, you had a question. <laughs> yeah so so before we're getting to wrap up soon so so we actually have a good friend of of ours um her name is ursula and um and she and, and of course she knows your your public tree work for quite some time now and and she is wondering if in like in the future if you can like like release your like dog pattern if i can what now and like like we, like we release like your dog pattern rearrange like re-release like re-release it oh re-release oh i thought you said rearrange i'm sorry i'm thinking of <laughs> no it's uh it, <laughs> in the planning stages of being re-released um uh it's just uh, uh some things have to come together uh about it uh and but it is going to be out there again if not um if later on if it doesn't come out then you know contact me some way or rather and I'll see if I can get you get copies out to people, depending upon you know. You know. But they give it a chance first. It's got to come up there, and uh, you know, that kind of thing. But we'll see what nice. we can do. Uh, we're trying to. We're going to do the reselling of them again. I think we did that one other time where we sold those patterns to people and stuff. So yeah. yeah. So we'll we'll do it again. We'll be doing it again. Nice. Awesome. If somebody awesome. else is helping me with it. So. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> good. Yeah, that's good. That's awesome. So, are there any words you would like to say to those who have been supported and follow your career over the um, years? Something I would like to say is that um, so when I when I when I worked on Fraggle Rock, I um, I, I I I I kind of regret something that I should have done years and years and years ago. Uh, a friend of mine made me feel that like, you know, doing those interviews and, you know, interviews with CBC and all that stuff was, was sort of taking advantage of me. And um, I kind of now, I wish I hadn't have listened to that because it didn't occur to me then, but the fact that I had cerebral policy and the fact that I got to work on a great show like that and with great, you know, people that, um, uh, that I should let people know about that so that people who are in the same boat can, you know, try to, to uh, accomplish their dream. Uh, I had gotten an email from a young lady who has something similar to what I had. Uh, so I have cerebral apology. I can't remember now what it was that she had, but it was something similar to it where she walks with the limp the way I did. She wanted to know how I... I did things and so forth to, to, to try to uh, compensate for my uh, way of walking and, you know, still make the characters look like they're walking properly in a, in a Muppet or, you know, puppet uh, environment kind of thing. And I kind of wish I had done that kind of thing more, uh, you know, like inspire disabled people out there to try to, you know, uh, accomplish their dream. Uh, and um, I kind of wish I had done that from the get-go, which I had never listened 
to that and uh, helped. A, it would have helped a lot of disabled uh, people and, and you know, kids and that kind of thing. So um, uh, that's that's something I, I sort of, uh, you know, wish I had it done before. But then, you know, a couple, you know, try try for your dream because you know, the more the most that could happen is that you don't do that you know you know if they could say no but you know you got to give it a shot you know what i mean right you know, yeah. definitely great advice so try to absolutely. go for your dream try to grab that it's like it's like the absolutely it's like the um life's like a movie write your own ending keep believing yes exactly exactly mm, yes you know uh, although i never thought about it before but now yes. that i think about it it's like that you know go for your dream go for your you're, uh, and if you can't get it one way, try to get it some other way. You know, it's um, uh, Hanson's not the only one out there. Let's put it that way. There are other puppet groups out there too. You know, try to try to get your and, and try to hone your craft and try to you know get you know uh, keep at it and everything and uh, and uh, you know being able to accomplish a lot. You know? So go for your dream. Go for it. Definitely. Exactly. So if people would like to connect with you, where can people find you? Oh, geez. Um, let's see. Uh, well, you know, there's the email. I have an email, um, uh, butchgcat at gmail.com. That's pretty simple. <laughs> it's not in the old, I had a uh, web page up one time, but that didn't, uh, for, for the past 10 or so years, it's not been working right. I've never been able to get emails off of that thing. So, um, uh, and I can't seem to get in. Uh, we, we tried to uh, change the password, tried that, and we couldn't get in to change anything. You can, it's stuff there. It's still up there. You can see it and everything, but I can't change anything because the passwords never work on the thing. No matter how many times we tried to get a new password and stuff, it just did not work. Yahoo was the one that, that uh, was doing it. And uh, so it didn't really, it didn't work. So, um, but if you, you know, uh, email me at uh, butchgcat at uh, gmail.com. Should, nice. get, get, should be able to get a hold of me. Absolutely. Awesome. Yeah. And so the last question that, uh, Matt's about to ask, or Marty, depending on who wants to take it, is the question we ask all of our guests at the end. Go ahead. I haven't been here in a bit. I'll ask this last question. Go right ahead, Marty. So this podcast, of course, is called Jake's Happy Nostalgia Show. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much, post-production. When you think of nostalgia, what do you think of? Or in your own words, how do you define the word nostalgia? Well, nostalgia, I guess, is is uh, stuff from long ago that you that you have a passion for that you watched way back when, and still have a passion for it. It's nostalgic. It's it's old. It, it's uh, you know from the past, and you uh, you know you 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 keep remembering it and keep it uh, going and keep it alive. I guess. Um, uh, does that make any sense to you? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Absolutely. Definitely great, great words to send on. Is, yes. Great words yes, send thank on. you very much. Well, Terry, thank you so much for taking the time to do the uh, interview on our podcast. This was a blast. Yes, thank oh, you. Oh, thank guys. you. It's been really great. <laughs> yes. yes, absolutely. <laughs> yes, and, and Morris, me being a Fraggle fan for so many years, I've been a Fraggle fan since I was eight years old. Just, um, how old are you now? Uh, 23. I'll be 24 in. <gasps> <laughs> I know, I know. At the end of February, um, it's just, uh, just, just, just meeting. We're just meeting. old. We're old. Yes. See. Yeah, we're See? old. Twenty-four is old. No, it's not. Jeez. Uh, but just, but just meeting a Fraggle like you's been a, a a dream come true for me for so many years, and I'm so glad it came true for me. So thank you, Morris. It was wonderful. Oh, you're very welcome. Thank yes, you. yes, likewise. What 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 Matt said. So it's it's an honor. And thank you. And thank you very much me, for I got something in my eye. I, I'm oh, sorry. Oh no. Oh no. no. Oh. oh no. Okay, it's okay. <laughs>
All right. <laughs> as I'm long good. as you'll be okay. <laughs> I'm good. I'm good. No, it's good. I'm good. That's, that's no, good. And, and thank you very much for you know taking time to do this. It's it's amazing. Thank yes. you very much for what you've done over the years. And I keep up a great work and cannot wait. What what's next? What's next for for you, Terry? And and for more yeah. as well. Yes. Yeah, thanks a lot, guys. Thank you. Yes, enjoy the rest of your day. Keep in touch. I will message you when this goes up. Okay, sounds good. You gotta yeah. edit it, I take it. Yes. 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 Absolutely. Well, bye, Morrison. Bye, bye, Terry. Oh boy, it'll bye, be tighter. Bye, See you. Bye, bye. <laughs> bye, bye, Terry. Take bye. Care. Bye. 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 Look at him go. <laughs> <laughs> Taking his dancing. <laughs> oh, man. The arm. It's I know, right? Uh, well, yes. Again, uh, enjoy the rest of your day. This was a blast. So I'll let you know when this goes yes. up. Yes. <laughs> okay. Take care, Take, guys. Yeah, you too, Sometimes Terry. I, you too, too. I didn't have to. Yeah. <laughs> Take care. Take care. Bye. Bye, Terry. Hi. <laughs> getting caught up in my own headset here oh, oh. that's okay i know i know that feeling <laughs> yes and, and goodbye to all of our uh, viewers and listeners um keep on the lookout for wonderful interviews and as always yes. what do you say wait a, minute, wait a minute you mean other people have been watching <laughs> well they will be once this goes up <laughs> Okay, all right, Bean, you want to... Okay. Okay. Now, why, don't we have, why, why don't we have Bean take us out? It's been a while. Sure, it, it has okay. been a while. Okay. Hi, Chris, say it again. <laughs> Elmo <laughs> wannabe. It's an Elmo okay. wannabe. <laughs> and, and then Bean, take us home. Okay. Keep nostalgia alive. See you next time. Yes, yeah, so what do you mm -hmm. say? Keep yep. nostalgia alive, everyone. Bye-bye. This was Bye. the Bruce Warner Brothers Seven Bye. Arts television presentation. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Bye, everyone. Bye. 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 Thank you for tuning in to another wonderful Jake's Happy Nostalgia Show interview. Be sure to follow Jake and the crew on social media and stream the show wherever you find your favorite podcasts. And as always, remember to keep nostalgia alive. Bye-bye.